Why? Why is there so much interest about the new Royal Enfield 650? Are these the most powerful motorcycles in the world? The most technically advanced? No. But compared with all Royal Enfields ever made? Yes. They are. These are the motorcycles, that many were waiting for so long. Especially most cafe racer enthusiasts. Therefore, today I am going to tell you everything you need to know about them. Welcome. To Racer TV. So, today's video will be sort of a vlog. And here is the new Royal Enfield 650 Interceptor, which I am going to test drive. The weather in the city of Oporto, was excellent. 23 degrees Celsius. Unfortunately, the wind was a bit strong, which ruins the engine's sound on some sequences. But still, I have managed to capture some moments with an excellent engine sound. It sounds really good. Doesn't it? But I will talk about that later. Why didn't I test the Continental GT instead of the Interceptor? Because they were not available for the test drive. In fact, according to this dealer, all the Continental GT units they had, were already sold. In a way, I think that this was a very predictable situation. So, what do I think about the new Royal Enfield 650? In the first start with the Interceptor, my first thought was. What a magnificent gearbox. The gear change is so easy. So light so smooth and with no effort at all just like the lovely clutch i think it is almost impossible to fail a gear change and even to find neutral is equally impressive i tried it several times from the first gear and also from the second gear and it never failed whatsoever I was also impressed by the engine. The power deliver is smooth, but progressively strong right since 2000 RPM. On the real world, the acceleration seems to be from a motorcycle with more than the 47 horses announced by Royal Enfield. It is the kind of engine that does not scare, but still shows some nervous temper, which delivers some fun to the ride. As you heard, even with stock factory exhausts, it sounds very good. And here is why. The secret is in the 270 degree crankshaft. As you can see in these animations, the timing between the firing in each cylinder is different. 
In most inline twin cylinder engines, the crankshaft makes a rotation of 360 degrees between every explosion. But this engine's crankshaft requires only 270 degrees between the first and the second explosion. In other words, the firing intervals are precisely identical to a 90 degrees V-twin engine, imitating the same sound and a stronger torque on low revs. Although the engine feels smooth, it still has a small, but very nice vibration, just strong enough to remind us that this is a twin-cylinder engine. Another important and lovely detail about this new engine is this whistle sound that comes from the gearbox. I love to hear it through the changing of gears. It sounds very similar, if not identical, to the Moto Guzzi V7. I must say that Royal Enfield's engineers were exceptionally clever with this motorcycle. Technically, this 650 engine does everything right. It has the right noises, a nice grunt, and it has character. The brakes are also great. The handling is very good and precise, making us feel like we are riding a light motorcycle. And the suspension is one of the most comfortable I have tried in a very long time. So, is there a place for negative things? Yes, there is. The initial feel of the front brake lever is a bit heavy. But after some time, we easily start getting used to it. I read some reviews, criticizing the rear brake foot lever, for being too near to the engine side cover. But personally, I really don't see any problem on this point. Perhaps this only happens, when people ride it using slippers. But in that situation, we cannot expect miracles. My height is 1 meter and 72 centimeters. Which means that for a medium tall size person, this seat height is almost perfect. The footrests are a bit intrusive when we pull the motorcycle back. And also when we use the side rest. The riding position is obviously excellent. However, the rear passenger will find some problems, reaching the rear hand holder. But even with these small problems, let's ask the key question. Would I buy this Royal Enfield Interceptor? Without any doubt, yes, I would. Because on this price range, I think it is very hard to find a better option. Unless, we start talking about the Continental GT. And here is another key question. Which one would I choose? I have to admit, that this is really a very tricky question. Because it depends on several factors. Essentially, the Interceptor is identical to the Continental GT. You can easily see the differences in this transition. The Continental GT has a stiffer suspension, and a good cafe racer attitude. But on the other hand, I see the Interceptor as a rough diamond, ready to be lapidated. In other words, the Interceptor has an enormous potential to be transformed in anything we want. While the Continental GT looks like a beautiful cafe racer. And this leads us to another interesting question. How different is the new Continental GT from this one? Yes, the engine sound is quite different. It sounds more like an old school engine. But 
what about the aesthetics? The 535 model, seems almost identical to the new twin Continental GT. But here is the truth. They are completely different. The frame. The seat. Fuel tank. Suspensions. Almost everything. Is new. From a commercial perspective, I think Royal Enfield has all the arguments, to be a worldwide leader, on this motorcycle category. Because these new models, have the perfect ingredients to be very desired, by all enthusiasts of the neoclassic motorcycles. And here is the saddest moment of my test ride. The return to the Royal Enfield's local dealer. I really enjoyed every moment with this machine. And because of that, I am very grateful to Moto Cidad for making this video possible. Thank you for watching Race TV. And as always, I hope to see you next week.